I'm live. It tells me I am live. Here's the thing, though. There's nobody watching right now. So if you go live and nobody's watching, are you actually live? It's like that time I fell in the forest. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll see this later. So, oh, there's somebody. Hi, somebody. I'm glad you're here. Oh, there are two people. Well, now I'm embarrassed that saying nobody was here. But of course, you guys missed that because you weren't here. All right. I'm going to start. Watching Apple TV Plus and TVing Apple Watch. It is Thursday, the 24th of September, 2020. And this is uh, this thing that we're doing. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I don't think I've actually said my name in any of the times I've done this because I'm still, uh, ooh, I'm still a tiny bit nervous. Yeah, I'm Ken Ray. If you happen to be coming across this without, uh, you know, because you know what I do or anything like that, I host a daily Apple podcast called Mac OS Ken. I've actually hosted a daily Apple podcast called Mac OS Ken since early, early, early 2006. So uh, first of the year, well, not first of the year, 26th of January, actually, uh, Mac OS Ken will turn 15 years old. And uh, and I, I heard about this YouTube thing the other day and thought, why not? So here we are doing that, and long may we wave. Uh, this afternoon, I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, second half of the show, I get a question. Does the Apple Watch Series 6 release seem a tiny bit messy to you? Doesn't matter. I'm not saying it doesn't matter whether it seems messy to you. I mean, it doesn't matter. Apple Watch Series 6 is going to be a hit. There are a couple of things, though, that may they seem a tiny bit messy. So we'll talk about that in the second half. Uh, first half, though, we're going to talk about Apple TV+. Plus. I know, right? I almost never mention Apple TV+, Plus ever. I'm fascinated by the, uh, the whole streaming space. So there was a thing that I came across my feed the other day. There's a guy that I follow on Twitter. And if you're going to stay on Twitter, I highly suggest you follow him as well. His name is Zach Stentz. He's a screenwriter. He wrote on Thor. He wrote on X-Men First Class. He wrote on The Flash. Uh, he's actually got a um, Jurassic World series right now on, I believe it's Netflix. It's animated. It is actually for kids, so it's not terribly uh, gruesome from what I hear. Camp Cretaceous is what the show is called. Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. I love Zach's thoughts on screenwriting. I actually talked about him when I was doing Mission Log quite a bit. He was the guy who wrote the long thing about how you need to account for every death in film, right? Because if you're watching like a movie starring The Rock and 100,000 people die because, you know, San Andreas happened or because, you know, the skyscraper fell or whatever. If you're watching a movie with a hero and 100,000 people die, but your hero lives, his opinion is it's still a bad movie because 100,000 people died in that movie, Right need to account for all those deaths. It's stuff like that that really turns me on. Plus, I'm a big fan of Thor, and I'm a big fan of X-Men First Class. And he's got some interesting insights. So I follow him on Twitter, at MuseZach, M-U-S-E-Z-A-C-K, at MuseZach, if you want to follow him. The reason I bring him up is because he had some very, uh, fairly dire predictions about uh, television and movies the other day. Dire in that we're used to the Marvel Cinematic Universe world now. We're used to, you know, Disney pumping $150, $200 million into a Star Wars movie every few years. We're used to, you know, the gigantic spectacle that justifies spending between $17 and $22 on a movie ticket, depending on if you want to see it in IMAX and 3D and all that stuff. And don't even get me started on the popcorn. Here's what Zach said the other day about movies. It looks like we're not going to see any more $150 to $200 million tentpole movies until American theaters are fully up and running again because both Tenet and Mulan proved you can't recoup those costs either theatrically or on VOD right now. VOD, of course, standing for video on demand. Now, in addition to the not numbers cited uh, by Mr. Stentz, it's possible that this was in response to Apple pushing back the release of Black Widow again. Black Widow was supposed to come out this past May. 
of course, there were, or maybe it was earlier than that. It might have been March or April. Anyway, it was supposed to come out this spring when the world caught coronavirus. And so they pushed it back until I want to say June. And they're like, well, that's not going to work. So they pushed it back till November. And then yesterday it came out that they're actually pushing it back till May of next year. Certainly Disney would rather have the ticket sales than, you know, putting it on Disney Plus for the extra $25 or $30 they charge for Mulan. I don't think that's the only reason that this one got pushed back, though. Uh, Black Widow is the beginning of um, phase four for Marvel, and they haven't been able to finish those other films yet. So even though Black Widow is ready to go, you don't have the Inhumans, you don't have the next um, uh, Doctor Strange movie. There are all kinds of things there that might be the reason that they're stopping that one. It might not just be not being able to recoup the losses. They were knocking over that domino so they could knock over a whole chain of dominoes. And if there are no other dominoes set up, then there's no point in knocking over the first one. Okay. That may be one of the reasons that he's saying that about the 150 to $200 million movies. And I know none of that has to do with Apple TV Plus, but we are getting there. He also wrote about TV, and this is where we start to get into the Apple TV Plus thing. He said, the television industry has been in an unprecedented expansionary phase for the past decade, supported by seemingly endless torrent of Wall Street and tech industry money. And we're utterly unprepared for what's going to happen when this party, as all parties must, comes to an end. I don't want the party to end. I want Bezos and Tim Cook and Reed Hastings to keep giving me and my friends money to make stuff and keep the sound stages of L.A. and Atlanta and Vancouver humming. But the era of $8 million an episode shows that get 200,000 viewers cannot last. I'm bummed that Dark Crystal Age of Resistance didn't get a second season, but to be honest, it's a major miracle that we got one season of a very big budget show based on a nearly 40-year-old niche property to begin with. Those puppets are expensive. Kudos to everyone involved. He wraps up this thread. What we're seeing, I think, is the end of a very brief era of new streaming companies spending huge amounts of money on niche properties and difficult concepts I don't think we're going to see a Dark Crystal Age of Resistance or a Sense8 ever again, at least at those price points. Ever again? Because Apple's still out there doing what it's doing. I'm thinking about C. I'm thinking about For All Mankind. Um, those are the television shows. And I'm thinking about Killers of the Flower Moon for film. I got to say, that one to me is particularly... I love Leonardo DiCaprio. I love Robert De Niro. I love Martin Scorsese. You know I'm a fan of Apple. $200 million for that movie? Seriously? $200 million for that movie? How many spaceships? How many superheroes? How many mean streets could you make for $200 million? How many good fellas could you make for $200 million? I'll grant you fewer because... Robert De Niro gets a lot more money right now, and so does Joe Pesci, and so apparently does... Uh, Martin Scorsese. Here's the thing. Apple is doing some smaller stuff as well. I'm curious to see Killers of the uh, Flower Moon, by the way. I started to read the novel. I'm a little bit bothered that the two stars that we know about in that movie are Robert De Niro and, uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Because that book is about systematic murders of members of the Osage Nation back in the 1920s. When, when, the, uh, when the reservation uh, per capita had more millionaires than any place else in the country, maybe any place else in the world, because there was oil discovered on this reservation. And so, of course, people came in and started kill, uh, killing them and you know, stealing their stuff. It's kind of weird to me that we're concentrating on two white guys for that story. But, you know, it's probably going to be the FBI agents, I believe, is what I heard, that uh, Caprio is going to play the FBI agents. Maybe we could concentrate on the people that the tragedy happened to. Just a thought. Apple. Apple is doing some smaller stuff. I mean, the films that it's making with A24, those are much smaller than the $200 million that they're spending there. And of course, they're picking up some other stuff as well. Um, they did not spend $70 million to make Greyhound. They did, however, spend $70 million to pick up Greyhound. They're doing smaller things in TV than, than you know, than C or uh, For All Mankind. I'm thinking about the comedies in particular, like uh, Mythic Quest's Raven's Banquet or Ted Lasso trying out of the BBC, I would imagine couldn't have cost that much. I mean, relatively speaking, it's more than I could afford to make, certainly, but uh, or more than I could afford to spend. I'm spending like, you know, 50 cents on this, maybe. 
I try to think about what it is that Apple TV is doing or what Apple is doing with Apple TV Plus. Years ago, I think before Beats, before Apple acquired Beats, Chuck Joyner had me on his show uh, talking about whether we thought the panel that he had assembled should spend, whether we thought that Apple should spend the kind of money they were rumored to be spending on creating new media properties. And they weren't even a trillion dollar company at that point. And yet my feeling was they got all the money in the world. If they want to blow some of it on this thing that might be interesting, that might be fun, that might get them some more, I don't know, that might make the ecosystem more sticky, might just tell some good stories. Yeah, sure. Why shouldn't they blow that money? There is a way to look at Apple TV Plus and see a giant mess, I think. Like every time they announce an Oprah thing, I don't care. It comes from out of nowhere, and, and I, I, just, I just don't care at all. But, of course, I'm not a huge Oprah fan. There are two of their dramas that have hit me, The Morning Show and Defending Jacob, and the rest of the dramas have left me flat. And I hate to say that For All Mankind has left me flat, but I think I stopped at episode five and have never gone back. It just, it just didn't do whatever it was supposed to do. There's all the kids stuff, and none of that means anything to me. And, and that's great. That's when the whole thing starts to look less messy. All they're ever going to get is me. All they're ever going to get is this. I'm told my connection was unstable. I personally have felt that way for quite a while. It says I'm back now, so we'll continue. If everything on Apple TV Plus was for me, this is all they're ever going to get. They want the people who live and die by Oprah and don't care about For All Mankind. They want the people who live and die by the high concept dramas who don't care at all about the British couple trying to get pregnant. They want the people who think the funny stuff is great and don't care at all about the great documentaries that they're sourcing as well. They're not building a channel. They're building a reservoir of content that anybody is going to be able to look to and find something that they want. They're going to have to keep spending $8 million an episode on series to build up that content, I think. Now, of course, we're in weird times. They may not be able to do that just because production may not get back into the swing of things the way they're expecting. I know that the second season of C is supposed to resume production next month up in um, Toronto, I think. I know that the second season of For All Mankind is supposed to be wrapping shooting. I know they're looking to continue building content, and they got enough money that they go out and buy stuff that we've never even heard of. Tehran was not something that they were part of, I believe, before the pandemic started. When the pandemic hit, they start looking around and say, okay, we're going to ask people to start paying for Apple TV Plus at the end of the year. What are we going to have for them to pay for? And so they go out and pick up things like Greyhound. They go out and pick up things like Tehran. And who knows how much other stuff is out there that we don't know about. The other thing that's weird to me about Apple TV Plus is it's just part of this other stuff that's happening. $5 a month is kind of a no-brainer unless there's only one thing on there that you're interested in, not five things or six things. And so then it becomes a thing like, well, I don't really need to spend that $5. But then when they introduce the bundles where you're picking up Apple Music, you're picking up some of your iCloud storage, and suddenly you have Apple TV Plus for free, Maybe it's not a thing that you spend money on, but maybe it's a thing that makes you okay spending $14.99 on a couple of other things, right? Maybe it's a thing that makes you feel better about spending 30 bucks a month because you're already paying for, well, I'm talking about me now, the two terabytes of storage, the Apple News Plus, and the Apple Music. Looking at Apple TV Plus and not knowing what they're doing almost feels better. Because if I could tell exactly what they were doing, unless, unless you just want to boil it down to what they're doing is growing out so much content that they can't be ignored. I mean, if you could see, oh, they're going after you know this type of audience, they're going after every type of audience. But they don't expect to grab all of the audiences. I think they just expect to have something for the people who show up. Anyway, that's my thinking. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. You can leave a comment on this video. You can also email me uh, info at macosken.com. Please do me a favor and let me know though that uh, you're emailing for that because um, otherwise I, I, I won't know why and I'll be confused like a good bit of the time. Actually, the thing I was going to ask you to do today is uh, send me feedback on something else. 
I keep not starting this show with a name because I don't have a name for this show. Mac OS Can Live seems the most obvious choice, partly because I've already got that feed and partly because we're talking about stuff that we either have talked about on Mac OS Can or will talk about on Mac OS Can. And that's the brand, which feels weird to say, but that's the brand I've had for 14 years, 14 and a half, whatever. So Mac OS Can Live seems like a possibility. Mac OS Can Wesley is just funny. Um, and maybe just a tiny bit too true. So we're not going to do that. Anyway, I would love it if you send in your suggestions. These, you can either email me, uh, info at macoscan.com, or you can hit me up on Twitter at macoscan, M-A-C-O-S-K-E-N, at macoscan. Just tell me what I should call the live show. And uh, that'd be fun. So I'm not getting an Apple Watch Series 6, not anytime soon. I would imagine I'll get one at some point because I'm really concerned about my blood oxygen and my heart rate. I don't have the ECG function, which, you know, bums me out because man is mortal. And last time I checked, none of that's the messy part, by the way. What they're charging for the Apple Watch Series 6 is fine. I mean, it's what you expected them to charge. The fact that the blood oxygen thing only exists in the iPhone, uh, iPhone, Apple Watch Series 6. I totally get. Uh, kind of bummed that the ECG didn't find its way down to the iPhone SE or that Apple didn't release the Apple Watch Series 4. But we actually talked about that earlier this week on In a Few Minutes with Shelly Brisbane. So if you want to check that out, that'd be great. I actually talked about it on In a Few Minutes last Friday as well with Allison Sheridan. So a couple of times talking about that. Not going to spend a lot of time talking about it here. The thing that looks messy to me about the Apple Watch um, Series 6 release, it's just the little tiny things. It's the details. It's seriously one of the smallest things they have, the Solo Loop Band. Is that what it's called? The Silicone Solo Loop Band. Let me start by saying I hate the idea of this thing already, and I'll tell you why. Uh, I have the Sport Band. Almost all of my bands are the Sport Band, uh, except I have this one leather band. And the thing is, some days my watch just feels tight. I don't know if, I don't know what that is. But, but what I like is the fact that I can change it. This is a ranty, stupid thing, by the way. But I like the fact that I can change it. And so when they introduced the sport loop, silicone, I was like, well, I hate the idea of that. Just because some days I want to wear my watch looser. Some days I want to wear it tighter. I don't get that kind of choice with the sport loop. Well, Good news. If I want it to be looser, apparently all I'll have to do is wait because after a while, the silicon loop uh, gets a silicone, excuse me, not silicon. They're two different things. The silicone loop gets uh, looser after a while. And Apple's like, yeah, you're cool with that, right? Which strikes me as odd. And you could say that's not messy. That's just, you know, the nature of the material. And I'll say, okay, that's fine with that. Um, just feels like it's a thing that looks good in an ad. Doesn't feel like it's a thing that's going to feel good in real life. Um, some of the other stuff that's a bit more messy, though, uh, the fact that if you got the wrong size loop, you had to return the watch and the loop. Okay, that part seems messy. Now, they've backed off that. It looks like you can actually just return the band and not return the watch, which makes perfect sense. The other thing that's a little bit weird and kind of messy as well, um, it turns out the blood oxygen thing only works on the Apple Watch that's paired to a phone. So if you're doing the family plan because you're worried about grandma's blood oxygen, right? You're going to have to get her a phone too. And she's actually not going to be in your family plan because, and I've only started reading about this. We'll talk about it more on tomorrow's Mac OS can, but um, the only one in the family plan that actually does the blood oxygen thing is the one that's paired to the phone. So if you're going to be controlling that for, you know, the kids and for grandma or for the kids and mom, you can't, you can only do your blood oxygen. And if you want grandma to know what her blood oxygen is, either you'll need an independent device or she'll have to have her own phone and she won't be part of the family plan. doesn't feel like that was actually clearly stated. In fact, that almost feels counter to the whole thing about here's why you want it for the elderly. Now, of course, there is still the fall detection. There is still the SOS. There's still plenty of good reasons to have it. It's just kind of weird that that, uh, that one thing was missing. The last one is the charger thing. And I'm not complaining about the fact that they're not including the charger with the watch. 
did you hear last week they said that the Hermes was getting the five watt charger and then today they've changed their minds and now the Hermes is not getting the five watt charger. None of this matters. As I said, none of this is going to affect the fortunes of the Apple Watch Series 6. At the same time, it just feels like, I don't know, the messaging was messy. Curious about your thoughts on that too. Info at macOSken.com or you can hit me up on Twitter at macOSken. Speaking of feedback, I got an email from John. Oh, John's talking actually about uh, Apple TV Plus stuff. Maybe I should have switched these around, but it's live. There's nothing you can do. John wanted to let me know that he and his wife are enjoying the Long Way Up episodes uh, this week. The Long Way Up, by the way, that's the uh, series with Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor. They've done a few series where they uh, get on motorcycles and go places, go around things, go up things, go down things. I'm looking for Long Way Over. The idea behind this one is basically they just, you know, jump buses like Evil Knievel used to. That's not really going to be a show. I hope it's not. Oh, I kind of hope it is. But I like Ewan McGregor, and I don't want to break every bone in his body. Anyway, uh, Joan, uh, John wrote in to say um, he actually noticed when he was watching Long Way Up that the other two series that they've done, Long Way Round and Long Way Down, are available on Apple TV+. Plus. They don't recall any fanfare about those two series being added to the roster. Did I miss that welcome surprise to the Apple TV Plus lineup? Well, I guess you did, John, but you weren't the only one because you're the one that told me. I had no idea that that was there. See, feedback isn't just feeding me. It's uh, feeding information to everybody else. So that's out there too, if you want to check it out, if you are an Apple TV Plus uh, subscriber or fan. Right. That's going to do this for today. <laughs> Good night. Sleep well. I think we'll be back here tomorrow. I believe we'll be back here tomorrow. Maybe we'll talk tomorrow about that. Or if we're not back, maybe we won't. If you're here live, uh, please stick around. I'll be happy to chat with you in just a moment. If you're not here live, well, where the heck are you? Talk to you soon. <sighs> oh, nice. Somebody's offering me a bourbon. I'd take it. Show's over, by the way. You're free to stick around, all four of you. One of you is my mother. I'll give you a hint. It's not Eric. <laughs> it's a different Eric, though, than yesterday. So people who are here is like, man, is this guy Eric ever going to leave? It's a different Eric. I apparently, there are two people named Eric who are interested in this show. At least two. Could be three. If nobody has anything to say, then I'm just going to go ahead and split. Theoretically, I'm going to the grocery store today, although that's looking less likely. All right, there's nothing. Man, that's sad. It's not sad. It's great. What are you kidding? An important guy like me without stuff to do? That's a Steve Martin joke. Anyway, um, you guys have been great. Thanks for listening. Oh, I should have done that in the show. Should this be a show? Like, a, like, should I put it up as an audio podcast as well? You're here for the video thing, so eh, I don't know. That's something I'm considering. You don't need to tell me. <sighs> All right, I'm out. Take care, everybody. Talk to you soon.